most broken field spell possibly ever created next to Chicken Game in a totally garbage deck. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery of our 32 year and destroy the other than boo boo staying off that like and subscribe button so that we can keep on climbing closer and closer to the 1400 ladder. We're only three away, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, hopefully sooner rather than later we'll hit it so that we can finally say we're in the 1400 mark instead of being stagnant at literally three away. <laughs> so, uh, I just want to jump right into this. If you didn't see my community post that I made earlier today about gimmick puppets, um, basically I said, yeah, I read the new cards. I've tested out the strategy. It seems cute. But unless we're banning Shifter, this deck is garbage. <laughs> like, <laughs> this deck is like the most explosive FTK Insanity Electric Boogaloo deck. And it sucks. And I want you to hear me out before like you're getting all upset in the comment section and be like, oh, Avery, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just upset because you got FTK. Uh, I haven't gotten FTK. And I think people are forgetting that Infinite Forbidden is literally months away and they need to take in con into consideration what the format may look like at that point. So this is just a build I've been messing around with. It, it's definitely by no means gospel. It's not, you know, the perfect build. Um, I'm playing going second cards in here because this particular build that I found online was only playing six hand traps, three ash, and three imperm. That doesn't stop, I would say, 99% of decks in 2024. The 1% of decks that stops is probably a table 500 rogue deck that you're going to be beating because you're just going to consistently FTK them anyway and you don't need the ash and imperm. Going second, I feel, is super difficult for this deck, so... Like, I'm tempted to cut the machine dupes to, like, maybe play Planet Pathfinder or, like, a third droplets, maybe play Talents, things like that. There's a lot of different things that you can do with the deck, and I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt because that, or because of that. Um, but it just, it can't play a lot of non-engine. Like, this build was playing Junk Puppet, which is a hard once-per-turn Monster Reborn for a gimmick puppet monster. I feel like Monster Reborn is just better. I don't even think you need Junk Puppet. Also, uh, Condolence Puppet's actually really funny, because even if the opponent has no monsters from the extra deck, it says monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck plus one. So at the very least, you're getting one free dump. So anyway, I'm going to shut up, um, go through the deck list, and then we will uh, we'll kind of talk about it. Because I at least do want to show off the deck profile for people who do want to play this and mess around with it. Because... Uh, at face value, just completely objectively, Dreary Doll, or Bloody Doll, whatever its name is, is busted. The field spell is cracked. This toy little soldier, foolish burials for cost. This thing is basically a prisma. Even if this thing gets impermed, you're still getting the free dump, which is absolutely insane. Also, this Chucky baby lookalike thing does not deserve to be as busted as it is, and it's completely cracked. Your opponent can activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your gimmick puppet monster effects. That is sexy. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive on into it here. Also, I think it's really appropriate that we're getting all these crazy looking gimmick puppet dolls. When Persona 3 Reload just came out, this this cattle thing literally looks like a Persona that you can make. So we're playing two copies of the cattle scream. Um, you detach an Exceeding Terror from a monster you control to summon it from your hand or grave. Uh, that's all you need to know. Uh, we're playing one copy of the Magnet Doll. I'm really tempted to cut this. If your opponent controls a monster and all monsters you control face up a gimmick puppet monster, minimum one, you can special summon this card. It's a level 8 extender. I don't really know if it's necessary. And then three Bisque Doll. This card's actually kind of good, too. You can special summon this card from your hand by ditching a Gimmick Puppet Monster. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Your opponent cannot target Gimmick Puppet Monster to control card effects. So it says no to Imperm, which the field spell doesn't cover, which is really funny. Uh, three copies of Bloody Doll. So if this card's in your hand, you can reveal a Gimmick Puppet Exceeds Monster in your extra deck. Special summon both a Gimmick Puppet Monster from your deck with a level equal to the revealed monster's rank. So you bring out a level 8. And this card. That's insane. If this card is sent to the graveyard except from the hand, you can add this card to your hand. You can only use each effect of Bloody Doll once per turn. You can't special summon from the extra deck the turn you activate either of this card's effects set gimmick puppet monsters. So there's possibly uh, a hypothetical where you can play like a small gimmick puppet engine uh, with like gimmick puppet monsters in the extra decks that you can get value out of this because it doesn't lock you in the main deck for gimmick puppets. So, I think that's something uh, really interesting. Uh, this card was always garbage, and now it's suddenly good. A Dreary Doll. If this card's in your grave, you banish one other gimmick puppet monster from your grave. Special summon this card. It's a free level 8 extender. You can only use this effect a Dreary Doll once per turn. Cannot be used as material for an exceed summon, except for summon up a gimmick puppet monster. Uh, I really like this card. Scissor Arms, when it's normal, summon you Foolish Barrel gimmick puppet monster. Um, yeah, seems pretty good. And then we already talked about Dub AB. Uh, when it's normal summon, you target gimmick puppet monster in your graveyard, except itself, summon it in defense. You can banish the card from your graveyard, your opponent can't activate cards or effects in response to your gimmick puppet monster. Seems pretty good. Um, then we got the three little soldiers. 
Uh, if this card is no more special summon you, Foolish Burial, Gimmick Puppet Monster for cost with a different level from your deck to grave. This card's level becomes the Scent Monsters. You can only use this effect once per turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Target up to two Gimmick Puppet Monsters you control. Increase their levels by... Uh, yeah, increase the levels by four. I thought it said up to four, but by four till the end of the turn. Really cool for the level modulation. Uh, these cards could be hand traps, double lightning storm, feather duster, evenly, um, droplets called by monster born. Uh, these are all things that could just be different um, non-engine cards that you may be playing in your deck when we get this in like four or five months. Uh, one condolence puppet. So you foolish barrel giving puppet monsters with different names from your deck to the graveyard up to the number of monsters your opponent controls that were special summoned from the extra deck plus one. Plus one's important because even if they have none, zero plus one is, what is it, folks? It's one. Yeah, very good. You pass. You pay, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a machine exceeds monster you control. Can't be shown by a opponent's card effects while face upon the field. You can only use each effect once a turn. So you can activate it, get into the grave, you get out, I don't know, a DB grinder, as someone called it, a giant grinder. You can banish it, protect it from card effects. Three copies of machine dupe. This is something else that you could potentially cut to, like maybe for Pathfinder or just some kind of other non engine. I don't really think it's absolutely necessary to let go. Dreary Doll, use this into two more Dreary Dolls. I mean, it, you could also do it with, like, Bloody Doll, which is pretty funny. Um, Machine Dupe's kind of crazy in this deck, to be honest. But <laughs> this this deck loses to a fucking shifter, so, like, who cares? <laughs> one Terraforming, uh, one Monster Born, two Argent Chaos, uh, one Call By, two Droplet. And then three of the Underworld Dolls. This card's absolutely busted. I'm sure you already know what it does by now. Uh, if not, we'll just go through it real quick. Uh, it's Stratus is a gimmick puppet monster from deck to hand. Gimmick puppet monsters you control cannot be shown by battle. Also, they are unaffected by your opponent's activated non-exceed monster effects. That's so broken. Once per turn, you can add, uh, detach and exceed material from a monster you control. Target a gimmick puppet monster and give it special summon it to your opponent's field in defense mode. That's important. So, like, it, you're obviously going to commit five or more summons in the field. So, if they nib... Uh, this only protects your gimmick puppets, not theirs, so they can still, like, clear their board. And then you have the three evenly, and the, the Puppet Parade's cool. It's basically a, a soul charge for the deck, but you only get to special summon gimmick puppet monsters with different names from your deck, up to the difference, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do. So if your opponent has five more monsters on the field than you do, you can summon back five. Then if your opponent's life points are at least 2,000 higher than yours, you can set a rank up magic normal spell from your deck. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, you can't special summon monsters except gimmick puppet monsters. I feel like you could just cut this puppet parade. The other puppet trap that they got kind of sucks. Um, and then for the extra deck, we're playing one Zeus. You can make this more if you want. Um, two of the Dark Strings. Two of the Fantastic Machina. Uh, one of the Giant Hunter. Two of the Puppet of Strings. And then this is literally Frieza. I don't care what anyone says. I, I didn't watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. This is Frieza. This is literally the pose that Frieza does in the anime. Uh, two of the Fantastic Machina, the rank 8 version. Two Giant Grinder, uh, one Gigantic Stall, and then two of the Chimera Doll. This card's actually pretty good. They, again, it looks like a Persona, which is really funny. Um, so why am I kind of like crapping on this deck? <sighs> Shifter and Draw Phase response. Like, uh, if you have the fucking call by, then cool. Like, you're, you just drew better than me. But all jokes aside, number one, I feel like a deck like this that relies on the graveyard so heavily actually makes me wonder if we will finally see Dimension Shifter banned, because I truly don't feel like a deck like this can exist in a format where Shifter is at three, or at honestly any number that's not banned. Because the thing is, is that you have to keep in mind, as exciting as this is, and as hilarious as it is to pull off, what is, I will give it a very consistent FTK, uh, what are you going to do against Tempai Dragon? That I, I shit you not, I'm not just pulling this number out of my butt. They can play upwards of 25 hand traps. That is absolutely insane. The math on that is like, what, a 99% chance to open up one hand trap in a five card hand. And like, what, maybe uh, if, you're, if you're playing 25 or even like 22, you're talking like 80, 90%. Like I would say like 88 to 90% chance of opening up a two or three hand traps like that that's absolutely insane and you may say well avery you know as long as you have the field spell like you know you, you can't ash them or whatever yeah but you can still draw them you can still shifter them you can still do all of these things to the deck that without like banishing da baby or banishing biscadol uh to like be insulated from other hand traps you're still going to be getting hit by these things and i'm sure some people are going to say well if they don't draw the out then i win uh, yeah and that's fair 
but it's the fact that these cards still exist that are going to be played in high numbers because these other decks at the point we get Infinite Forbidden will exist. Maybe there will be some TCG exclusive that comes out in Infinite Forbidden or in Legacy of Destruction that pushes this deck further, but I don't feel like by the time we get this, if we still have like the current things in the format like Shifter or whatever else that can hurt this deck, how is this deck even going to survive? On top of that, how the hell do you go second with this deck? Like, truly, how? Like, that's why I'm playing going second cards. Because playing six hand traps in a 40-card deck, that's basically just no non-engine. Like, uh, that's what makes decks like Tempai Dragon and even, like, Snake Eyes and all that so good. Because they can play so much non-engine. Look at all of these cards. Like, your entire monster lineup is engine. You have to basically play all of these. You can maybe cut the dupes. You can cut the going second cards for, like... Uh, hand traps but like at that point you're playing like what six hand traps you can't really cut the droplets i mean like maybe play super polys or something you don't really want to cut the call by because if you don't have the field spell set up then you're just kind of crapping all over the floor because you just can't play the game i feel like if you don't have the field spell set up then you're not playing the game because you're just going to get in a beer rude to fucking oblivion so it just makes it so hard to play and i've seen some replays where like if you have enough gas, yeah, you can play through like three interruptions and it's cool, but the odds of you playing through three interruptions is much lower when like you just don't have the consistency to get there. You have the consistency to get the FTK and possibly the field spell, but if you just don't have that field spell, you're having a really hard time and I just don't see this deck doing well. Again, barring any sort of TCG exclusive, barring any sort of ban list, I could be totally wrong. And... I kind of hope that I'm wrong, to be honest, because having an FTK in the game is never really a good thing. It's just, we have so many hand traps now between DD Crow and Buy Steals, and insert any name here, even if you don't want to name Shifter, I, I just don't know how good it's going to do. Maybe we'll like see the FTK pop off as like a side thing that you can do, but if the deck is solely going to be just an FTK machine, I don't feel like it's going to be successful. But playing it as like a sub-engine that can FTK and set up like a bunch of interruptions, oh, this is absolutely insane. But guys, again, I could be totally wrong. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.